Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining this first session of our Reconciliation, What Does It Mean to Me speaker series. I'm Glenn Tate of the Law Society. I'm going to be moderating the session this afternoon. Uh, we're very pleased to have with us Grand Chief Norman Yakalaya of the Dene Nation. Uh, a couple of preliminary things before I introduce uh, Chief Yakalaya and turn it over to him. First, if you could all please stay on mute, that eliminates any background noise. If you've got any questions, please use the chat function through Zoom. I'm gonna be moderating the session, and so I'll be passing your questions on to Chief Yakalaya. Uh, the third thing is we are recording this session, and it's going to be on the Law Society YouTube channel shortly after the session is over. And uh, the last thing is Chief Yakalai has told me that he's got a uh, he's got a uh, another commitment at 1230, but he's going to try and stay with us as long as he can. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Chief Yakalaya. Chief Yakalaya was born in Talita, uh, in the heart of the NWT. He's got a resume that puts, I think, all of us to shame. He started his public service first as a band counselor. Then he became the chief of the Talita Dene Band. He's been chair of the Sawtooth Tribal Council. He was the chief negotiator for the Sawtooth Denny and Métis land claim, and he worked with the Sawtooth Self-Government Secretariat. He had his fill of politics starting, territorial politics from 2003 to 2015, when he served three terms as the mayor, as the member of the NWT Legislative Assembly for the Sawtooth. Chief Yakalaya is a residential school survivor. He was the executive director of the Grolier Hall Healing Circle that negotiated the first ADR process with the governments of Canada and the NWT and the Roman Catholic Church. This served as a model for other alternate dispute resolution processes across Canada. He's worked on, he's been on the working group for the Indian Residential School Office. He was the executive director of the Samba K Healing Lodge. And in July of 2018, he became the Dene National Chief. As well, over the past 13 years, Norman has led a group of youth for a week each summer walking in the footsteps of our ancestors with the Canal Trail Youth Leadership Hike. Finally, uh, interesting piece of trivia, Norman's grandfather, Chief Albert Wright, was one of the signatories to Treaty Number 11. So Chief Yakalaya, we're very glad to have you with us today. Um, Chief Yakalaya is gonna be talking about what, what reconciliation means to him. And without anything further, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Glenn. And, and thank you to the members who are on the call today. Masi Cho Sotene, Sotene Guna I've said thank you in my language, my relatives. And today is a beautiful day outside. It is a pleasure to speak with you today. Lawyers, judges, law schools, and legal organizations have a long and challenging road ahead in addressing, in addressing the historical current problems and how the Indigenous people are treated in the Canadian legal system. Of the 94 calls, to action and truth and reconciliation commission in 2015 report. Two are specifically directed towards the legal profession. And last night when I thought about this, I'm thinking of the word reconciliation. And so I Google it. I can talk in the financial terms. I could look at the political terms, the social terms, and the legal terms. But I simply want to know what is reconciliation? You're asking a very important question. And when I looked at that word, it talked about an act to have action, to work together for a common good. So I wanted to ask 
this question also to my elders, which I will do later to the Denny Nation Elders Council on reconciliation. I want to say one calls upon the Federation of Law Societies to ensure that you as lawyers in your profession receive relevant cultural teachings and training of the Denny, of the Métis, in the Inuit. The other calls upon the law schools to require that all law students take a course in indigenous people and the law. And more importantly, to learn about the Dene laws, the Dene values and principles. We also have laws amongst our people that are not quite understood by the legal societies. We have natural law, we have universal laws, and our great lawmaker, Yomoria, who set the laws down for our people to live by. Those are our laws that we talk about, having cultural training and teaching. And I think that part of the next step of reconciliation is now that we know the truth, the truth of the residential schools and all that has been put upon us since the doctrine of discovery came over and landed on the grounds of the indigenous people. We have to know the truth and sit with you to deal with it. We want to move forward. We do not want to live in the past. We want to know there's a path out there, the path of reconciliation. As you know, between 1831 and 1996, more than 100 and 50,000 First Nation Inuit and Métis children were removed, sometimes forcibly torn from their families and sent to the residential schools. This was designed to assimilate and well document to assimilate the indigenous children into the Canadian society by eliminating parental involvement in the family, the core of who we are, spiritually, culturally, and intellectual development. The resulting harm and tragedy of these policies inflict upon our people is unimaginable and continue to echo generations later. Reconciliation is still at the beginning of the process. There are many wounds that will take many, many years to heal. The path of reconciliation is a long, difficult, and a healing process, a transformation process. We're here, we have always been here, but then it can survive. But we need your part in this to help us with the legal system. A key part of the reconciliation is education. It's about educating yourself, your colleagues, town council, or even the defense lawyers who might be on their particular file with you. And ultimately, 
educating the courts. For the non-Indigenous lawyers, this means recognizing what you don't know and seeking out the knowledge that you need to know and to build meaningful relationships with your clients so that they can sh share their story, live the experience with you. You have the ability to become a very valuable ally. It takes courage to stand up and speak. Believe me, I know this in the face of fear. But courage is also needs to mean to sit down and listen. As the great poet Ralph Waldo Anderson once said, the good lawyer is not the one who has an eye to every side and angle and qualifies all his qualifications, but who shows himself on your cause so heartily that he can scrape your way so that he can scrape your way out of any situation. As lawyers, you know you win some, you lose some, but you'll learn from it. And that's your job. The government of Canada Ex express commitments to achieving reconciliation with the indigenous people through a renewal nation to nation, government to government. Indigenous crown relationship is based on the recognition of rights, respect, cooperation, and partnership as a foundation for this transformational change. The government recognizes that indigenous self-government and laws are critical to Canada's rebuilding for the future and that the indigenous perspectives and rights must be in incorporated in all aspects of this important relationship. In doing so, we will continue the process of this transformational shift to end the residential school legacy and to adjust our laws and policies that gives meaning to reconciliation in the legal world. We need you lawyers to help us. We will share with you our DNA laws so we can help you. So in order to achieve reconciliation, we must establish and maintain a mutual respect full relationship between the Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people. There has to be an awareness of the past, an acknowledgement of the harm that has been inflicted, atonement for the cause, and an action to change the behavior. It is critical that the NWT Law Society and other organizations across Canada continue to recognize the significance of the work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the 94 calls to action directed at all segments of the Canadian society and to review the Royal Commission of Aboriginal Report chaired by George Erastus. Like coming back to the truth and reconciliation call to action, I want to specifically point to number 27 that calls upon the law societies to ensure that lawyers receive appropriate 
cultural competency teaching and training, which includes the history and the true legacy of the residential schools. The United Nations Declaration of the Rights of an Indigenous People, treaties and Aboriginal rights, Indigenous law, the Aboriginal Crown relationship, and more importantly, the Dene laws, Dene values and Dene principles. It is only through our collective struggle at, on this path of reconciliation I believe there is hope, hope for my people, hope for my children, hope that we have an opportunity at this time in COVID to change, that to rebuild this country, to rebuild a future where First Nation self-determination is respected in ways that allow us to thrive standing proud in our culture and our language. This is what I was so much grateful for the question. Well, at five years old, I want to let Glenn know when I did my research, even that I didn't know that I was five years old when I went into the residential school. I was so proud of where I came from. I was so proud of my language. I was so proud to eat my own food. But when I got to Groyer Hall at five years old, my whole world changed because then I knew that there was something wrong with me because of the way that I was treated. I was given a number. Food that I ate, I never thought existed. And how cruel the Roman Catholic nuns were to us little boys, so confused as we were told in churches that God is good. God will look after you. Well, why is his people treating us so bad and making us so wrong for being indigenous? And the beautiful language that I speak with my grandmother was so wrong that they said it was the devil's language. My whole world changed. And so I became ashamed of my culture, my language, and even the color of my skin. All what I'm saying requires full participation from all parties. And this will not happen overnight, but it must start now. The status quo is no longer working. It is up to people like yourselves to challenge that and to assure you your part to moving forward and fulfill acts of reconciliation is a start. Thinking about the legacy you want to create, what can we leave to our children and our grandchildren? This is your time to leave your mark in Canada, in my people, in the world. The world is truly watching as today we have an audience with the Pope in December of Indigenous people. The Pope has invited the Native people, the residential school survivors. We want to open that door. As painful as it is, we appreciate it of accepting the Pope's invitation in December. Truly, the world is watching. As we say in Dene Day, many heartbeats, one Dene drum. 
Thank you for listening. Take care. Have a good meeting. And I appreciate being here with you today. Masi. Thanks, Ben. Thank you very much, Chief Yakalaya. Um, would you be able to stick around for a few minutes if we if we got some questions? Oh, yes. Great. All right. So if there are any questions for the chief, if you could send them to me through the chat box function and I will pass them on to him. And sometimes, Chief, I got to let you know this can be a shy group, so <clears throat> it may be that it may be that we don't have any questions. I want to thank you, though, for sharing particularly your personal insights, uh, your personal journey uh, as a residential school survivor going up to Inuvik and to grow your hall and what that meant to you. I think that I think those are powerful words for all of us uh, who are practicing law here in the NWT. Um, and as you know, because we've talked before, um, we are launching our own reconciliation journey for our members. We're making resources available to our members so that they can start their own reconciliation journeys. And I think hearing you talk uh, is certainly part of my reconciliation journey. Yeah, thank you, Glenn. And I, I never, I never have known the lawyers to be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I'm very, I'm very pleased and again to 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 speak. And uh, you're very, very good at what the lawyers do, I guess, and asking that question. It's a very important question. And I think that should be also, you know, let other Canadian people know what reconciliation means to them. And uh, I want to thank you for this opportunity. Chief, we did get a question. Do you have any opinions on the best areas of law that lawyers could work on to help advance reconciliation today? Thank you. And um, I, I, I would want to say, um, Action is very powerful, and that the uh, drafting of the laws, the new legislation, uh, I, we know we, we have that in the UN and the other legislation from the federal government or even to the territorial government in legislation that there are certain words that should be thought about when new legislation is being considered in both the territorial and the federal law in drafting legislation. Key words like self-determination or reconciliation or things that identify that um the, the the mindset now has to think about um the Aboriginal people. I don't know if I'm making sense, Glenn, but that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. No, like, thank like you. Healing. Yeah. Thank you for that, Chief. Another question. Uh what do you think we can do to encourage more Indigenous students to become lawyers, to get into the legal process? You know, that, that is a really good question. I was thinking about that. You know, how do we, you know, encourage our young people to get into the law profession? And I think that Going into the schools, of course, career opportunities and focusing on indigenous law, but to have a training ground uh, to invite the legal minded young people to make a difference. If they can see that 
the law and the lawyers are making a difference in their community, such as paralegal opportunities. It's like going on the Canal Youth Leadership Hike. We take a group of young people every year to go on the youth leadership hike. And they're excited and they do it. And you know, out of that group, we like to pinpoint one or two that you know, just wants to continue this. They love the leadership hike. They love working with group. Out of say eight to nine, one might be saying, I want to continue on. Eight of them, yeah, it's good. It's, we had a fun, we did the challenge, we hiked it, and you know, but it's not my cup of tea. And I think we need to go through that with the young lawyers, training them. If you get a group of, maybe there's 10 of them that want to look at, the law is just not civil court constitution law is indigenous law there's so many good things in law that they can practice teaching law writing law i think we got to start and i'll be very happy if the law society wants to work with the denny nation and and, and promoting law law and lawyers I think we can work. I've been thinking about that. We got to do that. We got to give hope to the young people that you can become a land team lawyer, a constitutional lawyer, or a criminal lawyer, or a civic lawyer, corporate lawyer. I think we've got to start doing that. And just like the youth canal leadership hike over the last 18 years, there's over 180 youth that hiked the trail. And on my hand, there's, I think, five or six that want to continue who've been on a trail for the last four years that want to become a youth leadership hiker. I think that's a good foundation. I thank the lawyer who made that suggestion. I'm, I'm all for getting our young people into law school. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Do you have time for one more question? Because I know you have to go. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got time for it. This is All right. very important. This is key. Yeah. Great. Even two more. Even two more. All right. Okay. The last <laughs> question, the, the next question we have is uh, where can we as lawyers find out more about Dene legal traditions, particularly legal traditions around criminal law? Is there something we can read? Are there people we can talk to? Where can we find out more about uh, Dene legal traditions? Well, that's very. Um, um, a good question, and that would have to go to different sources. Uh, I would say one to have a meeting with the Denny Nation Elders Council. Some of our laws are to be kept from sharing, but some of our laws that we can share. The elders would know, know which ones we could share. And which ones we could we can talk to about in the general public is a very 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 specific um, sensitive request. And I know that um, when I went to school, we went to uh, Wati, and we had uh, uh, I believe it was uh, Alice Leggett. Was my professor, and we studied the Kinsho legal uh, law, law. And for example, when we were there, we had um, interviews our elders, and they talked about the, the legal, the legal legalities of Denny law, cultural law. There was a guy that stole Bannock from the camp, and uh, he stole Bannock. And so when they found out that he stole Bannock, what was his punishment that they put a pack sack on him and they loaded up his whole pack sack with lots of bannock and he had to walk around the community all day. And people see that that was his punishment. That was our law. And another example is that when we have uh, to go on the land, 
we call it pain the land, the water. That's our law. There's so there's so much. So I think the first start um, we can go into the Denny Nation, but it also to talk with our elders. This is very good. That's that's I think this is a good thing that the, who's ever asking the question to start to look at. And there's no, so much around Canada. I think we want to start with the Denny. And, and you know, we have some very basic laws that uh, that we we can communicate and we can work it through. I think that's 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 reconciliation. Thank you. Great, thank you for that, Chief. Uh, those look like all of the questions, and I know we're getting close to uh, to the time for your next engagement. Uh, I want to thank you very much again. I want to thank you for sharing your personal um, trials um, and. Uh, because that leads all of us uh, further along in all of our reconciliation journeys. So, Chief, thank you again very much. Uh, and I think you and I should chat soon about perhaps a meeting with the Elders Council. That's very good, um, Glenn. And um, thank you very much for the Law Society. Good luck in your work. You're, you're on the right track. You're asking some very good questions. And uh, I, I strongly believe in what you're doing and good luck with the rest of your meeting today. Thank you for inviting me and certainly keep asking these questions that, that get us leaders to think and, you know, just to move the, the file, the metric file, or the measurement a little further to what we achieve. And I believe that the, the North will be the leader in, in what we're doing right now. Thank you so much. Thanks chief. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day.